Hi, this is June Alma of the June Alma Talk Show. And welcome again to an episode of Good Food, Good Wine, and Good Company. Tonight, we have with us, um, in the history of Spain and the world, the first Filipino hand carver. And he's called Maestro Miguel Lopez. Hello. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Como estas? <laughs> welcome to the Junawa Show. So, yeah, would you like to tell us uh, about your story? I know this is one of the most storied hands in the world, Michael. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, um, you know, you're world-renowned and our Filipino audiences would love to hear about it. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, here, well, I'm now here at Chef Jesse here in the Philippines. So this is a dream come true for me because uh, I was carving ham for more than uh, 15 years now. So I carved a thousand ham and, uh, well, now I'm... Uh, um, coming back here in my, my own country to carve ham for like three to four times a year. So this is, I'm very proud of it. Now, yeah, would you like to tell us also about the kinds of hams that, uh, you know, the technical process on how, how you cure the ham and what kinds of uh, pork that uh, you would need to be able to come up with a cured ham mm -hmm. that, is, uh, that is only, uh, you know, um, unique to Iberico hams. Mm -hmm. Well, what do we have here? So this is the brand 5J, okay? So this is uh, internationally known as Pata Negra. Pata Negra because they are black pigs. So I have my, my own pig here, so I will show it to you. So they are uh, a black pig, but they are not wild, okay? And they, have, they are long-legged pig, and they have long snout, okay? And this is the best because this is 100% pure Iberico pig. Okay, so you will see in this tag, so this is like their uh, 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 cedula, okay, so they have the numbers and this is certified that this is 100% pure Iberico pig. So from generation to generation, it comes from the same father, the same mother, so there's no crossing of breed. And they are the oldest since 1879, so they maintain the purity of the breed since uh, since 1879. And uh, well, so this leg of ham, so they are free-range pigs, okay? So they are always doing exercise, working out every day, looking for food. So they are always roaming in the pasture land. That's what we call the ESA, okay? So there's a time in the ESA, so where Habugo is. So the J stands from the word Habugo, okay? So I want to clear that. So Habugo, uh, it means, so this the, uh, Habugo is the promise where they dry cure the ham and where the pasture land is, okay? It's in the southwestern part of Spain. And this is the 5J, it's like a five star. So this is the premium brand, top of the line. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a luxury product. Okay, so it has the same level as caviar foie gras and jamón ibérico de bellota cinco jotas. And well, so they are uh, free range pigs and they are also acorn fed. So this is very important. So acorn fed means, so there's a time in Habugo. So uh, there's uh, from uh, November up to February, it can extend up to March. So there's too many acorn in the pasture land. Okay, I brought some samples here. So this is the original acorn that they eat. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. 
So if you saw the movie Ice Age, so they're the same acorn that. Uh, so that's okay. all they eat, the acorn. Yes. Uh, so they eat the herbs, the roots, so all the natural uh, uh, things that they can get in the. I in see. the okay, but the time that's uh, the the November up to up to February, so mm -hmm. the the acorn is fell, uh, falling down from the, the oak tree. So this uh, is the, the main food. Oh. Uh, 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 so, mm -hmm. so this is uh, the acorn. They could uh, the pigs they consume for almost 12 kilos of acorn a day. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they must reach 160 to 180 kilos to be slaughtered. Okay, so from, from that time. And then, so this is a, an air dry. Okay, it's not smoked and it's not cooked. Only the, only the air that they have in the southwestern part of Spain can dry cure the meat. Natural. It's very natural and very organic. Okay, so the processing of this ham, so when the leg of ham is still fresh, they cover it with sea salt from the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, so they put it in the chiller with uh, uh, 80 to 90 percent of uh, humidity and 5 to 6 degrees of temperature. And from that, so it depends that that's one day per kilo. For example, the leg of ham weighs uh, 10 kilos, that 10 days it will spend in the salting period. Okay, so the salt will penetrate into the meat and then the salt will also take up the excess moisture and water. Okay, so with that, uh, be, uh, after that, they clean the leg of ham thoroughly and they hang it in the cellar for three long years. Wow, mm. that's a long time. So besides uh, salting it, is there another method like uh, smoking and pickling? Um, you know, and then what makes the, the ham so expensive? I know this is, you know, the most expensive in the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, like one ham, leg of ham would cost something like, what, 70,000 pesos? 70, wow, pesos it's almost $2,000 per ham. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so please tell us, you know, what, what is the selling point for this ham? What, what sets it apart from the regular, the other kinds of hams around mm -hmm. the world? Okay, so the, the the most important thing that you you have to uh, you, can, you can see in the in this this leg of ham is the pure the, the purity of the pig. So the hundred percent of the breed of the pig. So so you that was it was certified here. So the government, the Spanish government, put this tag. Mm -hmm. So you will know that that this is this leg of ham came from a hundred percent pure Belgian pig. And then the food, mostly the food that they eat. So the acorn is very important. Because of the acorns, so you will see, so this is only the only fat in the market that is good for your health. How oh, really? Yes. What, what do you mean it's good for the health? Because something, is it something like olives, you know, good or virgin coconut oil? Is it the kind of fat that the well, leg has? Mm -hmm. So, well, uh, the, so the pigs, they eat, they eat a lot of acorns. So this is the only fat in the market good for your health because it's rich in oleic acid that kills bad cholesterol. Okay, so it has the same property as an olive oil. So that's what makes it so fancy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So, but the, you know, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the um, uh, Kobe, Kobe um, beef, mm -hmm. wherein they really strictly prohibit the beef from, or the cattle from, roaming around. Mm -hmm. And then they even massage the muscles uh -huh. so that it's really very tender and soft. Mm -hmm. But you were saying earlier that, you know, the pigs for the ham have to mm -hmm. be sort of going around, roaming around and doing a little exercise uh -huh. besides eating only organic, uh, you know, pasture and uh, apron. So what what do you have to say that, that you know, that these this kinds of meat do have mm -hmm. to exercise also? Yes. Well, the processing of this ham with a with a Kobe beef, uh, this is totally different. Okay. So, the the pigs they're doing most exercise. You know, but this uh, uh the purity of the so this kind of breed. So the ham is so tender. So that is why. But you must it must be a carb paper thin slice, and then when you eat it, it almost dissolves in your mouth. Okay. And uh, they are free range pigs. So the the thing is so. Uh, the fat infiltrates in between muscles. Oh, so, so that makes it tender. That makes it tender. So it makes this part of the ham more juicier. Okay, because of the infiltration of the fat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like always in the gym. So less fat. Mm -hmm. The infiltration between muscles. I see. Okay. So is, does this mean that this is healthier than the beef, or it's just you know a different kind of physiology that but both are equally um, healthy to eat? Mm -hmm. 
for me, I think this is more healthier than a, than a, than a Kobe beef or anything else in the world. Mm. And it's very natural. You can you you even didn't uh, you you don't even to cook. You have to cook it. Okay, so you can eat it almost uh, like uh, so. It's not raw. It's an air dry. Mm. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, uh, t tell us some more, uh, Michael, about you know you, your your story about how you landed into Madrid, Spain, ham carver in the world. I mean, recognized by all European royalties, even right, and um, all around the globe, including uh, South American, uh, you know, um, countries. Yeah. So uh, please tell us how you came about to specialize into because this is really very uh, highly skilled um, specialty. You know, just mm -hmm. just the carving is all you do, right? Yes. Yeah, you don't really raise it, but you just carve it. I'm all carving. And, and uh, everybody who would like to, to hire you would just hire you specifically just for the carving of the ham, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so please, you know, share with our audience your inspiring story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so uh, my uh, I, I, I was uh, started uh, as a master carver, I mean carving ham, since year 2000. So. Uh, the the same brand, so I'm very proud. So I was uh, uh, started with a uh, 5J ham, and I ended with them too. So, so they have their own restaurant in Madrid. So I started as a waiter since year 2000, and then from that, so they uh, trained me how to carve the ham, and they saw the potential of my hand on 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 uh, how to uh, carve the ham, and they told me that you will be the master carver of this restaurant. And from that, uh, that uh, time of the year, so I started doing. Some some events carving ham outside the restaurant too so uh, so I will was uh, recognized by uh, from, from, that, from that restaurant mm -hmm. so I started. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. so um, yeah tell me because lately um, our Philippine uh, national um, cuisine or mm -hmm. uh, team has won as the best in, in all of Asia Mm -hmm. Right, so uh, Filipino cuisine is the best. Yeah, congratulations to our culinary team. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the members of the team, right? And, yes, most of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, how, how would you compare our Filipino food uh, compared to Spanish? Because most most of our Filipino food are also taken after Spanish mm -hmm. uh, dishes, right? And even the names and all that are after because mm -hmm. we were colonized by Spain. So please tell us what's the difference and, you know, um, yeah, what, what's, uh, what you would recommend? Okay, well, uh, Filipino, although I'm living in Spain, so I'm always uh, craving for a Filipino food. So that is why when my mom is always inviting me going to, to, to her house, I will go, wow, I will eat rice again. <laughs> okay, uh, well, the Filipino food is very delicious and, and the Spanish too. I think that, uh, well, I was in the Madrid Fusion Manila this, uh, this, this April and uh, it was fascinating to see uh, uh, the Filipino, the fusion of our food and the, and the, and the Spanish food in the same place. So, and then uh, the, the evolution of, uh, of, uh, of our cuisine is very, uh, is, is, is extraordinary. If you will see the, all the, 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 the great uh, Filipino chefs doing something new of, uh, of making uh, something uh, different with our own uh, recipe. That's very, very good. So, very creative. Very creative. Okay, so uh, um, shortly we shall be having uh, Maestro Portador de Jamon, uh, Miguel Tevez Lopez, <laughs> Mr. Michael um, Lopez, to uh, demonstrate to us uh, how he will present and how he would carve the ham so that uh, you know our televiewers can um, witness the beautiful presentation of uh, the best ham in the world. Thank you and uh, see you shortly. Hi, this is June Awa of the June Awa Talk Show and we're back. Uh, together with uh, Maestro Cortador um, Miguel Tevez Lopez of uh, Madrid, Spain. We are now at the Chef uh, Jesse's uh, restaurant in Rockwell, Rockwell Club. 
and um, he will show us um, how he's going to serve uh, the um, Cinco Hotas Iberico Ham. Hi, uh, Michael. Yeah. And uh, please, please tell us how uh, you would, you know, present serving the ham. Yeah. So. So, uh, so this is a we're doing like this is a personalized uh, service to our uh, customers here, to our guests here at Chef Jesse. So uh, mostly, so we have this special card, so we can uh, carve the ham and present it in front of our guests. Okay. So uh, this uh, this ham, so I'm very proud to be uh, to be able to be the first Filipino master carver with Berico ham in the history of Spain. So thank God that I'm here at Chef Jesse. And this is a uh, oh, you can have it only here. So this is exclusive at Chef Jesse. Uh, this is uh, carefully selected by me. So if you see, so I have my security tag here. So that's the MCF. It means the se selection privada. Selection privada is my private selection. So it has to meet my standard to be uh, uh, for my customer. Okay, for my client. So uh, so we have only the best here at Chef Jesse of the 5J ham. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, you know, being Filipinos. We're familiar with pork as lechon, <laughs> so of course this is very different because it's really specialized. No, it's the leg of the pork, and um, yeah, tell us some more. How of uh, how are you going to serve it? For instance, um, I'm going to have um, is this for dinner or tapas? As you know, as appetizers, or how, how would you suggest that the Iberico ham is served and presented? Well, uh, the Iberico ham is, uh, is, you can eat it anytime, so even for breakfast. So you can make a toast with, with uh, fresh rub with fresh tomato and you put the ham on it so you can have a toast of ham. So uh, in the morning or you can even eat in lunch, uh, merienda and, uh, and dinner, so anytime, so you can eat the ham. So that's why most of the Spanish uh, houses, they have a leg of ham in their house because they are continuing eating ham. So there's a knife and the a, and a ham. Uh, in their kitchen. Okay, so would you like to start already, uh, you know, demonstrating to our televiewers how you would like to uh, slice and carve the ham? Okay, so well, uh, carving this ham is an art, okay? So uh, mostly uh, you will need a special uh, uh, tools to, to carve this knife, to, to carve the ham, okay? Mm -hmm. So I have it here, so these are all my tools, so you will need uh, for example, so this is a long knife, so to get that paper thin slice of the ham, okay, so you must use the knife from here to here, okay? So the swinging of the elbow is very important, it's like you're playing a violin, okay? So you start carving when you're pulling, not when you're pushing, so that is why your knife must be very sharp, so that's very important, okay? And uh, so we will need to, uh, this is a deboning knife, so this is shorter, okay, short and narrow, so you can separate the meat to the bone, so you can take more advantage of the ham, okay, so to get most like 100% of the, of the product, okay. And uh, you have to use uh, these tools too, so this is an ordinary kitchen knife, okay. And uh, it's uh, to take off, for example, the dryer part. So this is a dry skin. So it, there is a time it's so hard. So you will need. So this is a bigger knife. So it was must. Uh, you must use this for, uh, to take off that part. Uh, effort uh, less effort. From that part. Okay. So uh, the knife sharpener is very important too. So to maintain our knife sharp. Okay. So. Well, so I'm using this tweezer too, so this is the tweezer, so not everybody, they want to touch the food, but in Spain, so you can uh, you can see some ham uh, carvers, so this is very artisan way of carving ham, so you can uh, uh, take the, the slices of the ham and put it in the plate with your finger, okay? But uh, not everybody, they want to touch their food, so uh, we have this special uh, tweezer to take off the, uh, the, the slices of the ham, okay? So normally, here at Chef Jesse, so we serve this as tapas, okay, of 12 grams, and then so we also serve it as half a plate, so that's 35 grams, and the full portion of 70. And it's served with picos andaluces, so these are the picos andaluces. What are those? 
So this is like an olive oil cracker. Okay, it's very typical in uh, Andalusia, so in the south, in the south of Spain. Is there okay. anything it's stuffed with olive oil, or it's made from olive oil? Mostly they are neutral and the touch of olive oil. Okay. Inside. Inside. So no, it's a mix it's with the uh, with the. Like, uh, it's like little bread. Yeah, it's like an, a cracker. Okay, so uh, so we serve it like this, so we call it picos andaluces, and then uh, we, it's also served with a uh, pan tomaca. Pan tomaca is very typical in uh, Barcelona, so we're Catalonia, Catalonia. So it has uh, toasted bread rubbed with fresh tomato and virgin olive oil. Mostly they love it with garlic, but uh, here so we put only that. So if the uh, customer they request it with garlic, so we put uh, some garlic on it. Okay. Okay, so I will serve you a tapa. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's okay. individual, most of the individual for. Uh, uh, and uh, the half a portion, the full portion, you can. Uh, mostly they, they they have to split it, so they you have to put it they share it in the center. Okay, so I will start to carve the ham. It's paper thin, huh? It's paper thin, so it almost has loosened. So you must see the light at the back. The size, it depends on what part of the hammer you, but the ideal size is like a size of a credit card. Okay, it's only bite size. Okay, because one piece of this slice, so the flavor and the aroma mm -hmm. is so intense. So if you eat it, so uh, you will keep on eating, uh, eating bread. Okay, and it's long lasting uh, uh, flavor. It lingers mm -hmm. in the mouth. It lingers in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Although you you already ate the ham, and you will still notice that the the, 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 flavor the aroma is still there. Is still there. So this is the top of 12 grams, oh, okay. okay, this is like uh, 4 to 5 slices, okay, so I will put some Okay. And then uh, in a minute, so mm -hmm. you will have the toasted bread with the tomato and olive oil. Oh, okay. So you can, uh, with a cracker, you can wrap the ham mm -hmm. if you want to, or simply eat the ham and uh, eat the, the cracker and the toast. Okay? I see. Okay. So should I start already, or yes, I'll just sir, wait please, for the? I see. Mm -hmm. okay. So eating this ham is like you're drinking wine. Okay. Oh, okay. You can appreciate the flavor, the aroma only by smelling. I see. Mm -hmm. So first, I should, I should have to smell it, right? He yes. said. It's like you're taking in the... Yeah, it smells... In, mm, in, it smells nutty yes. and... Uh, it's like I'm walking the pasture now. <laughs> mm, <laughs> yummy! Mm. <laughs> so, uh, what's next? Then I should already taste so you, it? Yeah, you can taste it. Mm -hmm. mm. How's the flavor? It's, it's chewy. Like a, yeah, um, it's a sweet and salty at the same yeah. time. So it's like buttered out. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, it's true. You said that the flavor sort of, you know, um, comes together with your tongue and your mouth. Mm -hmm. And it all like melts in your mouth. Mm -hmm. You can mix it with the cracker. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is how Spaniards yeah, eat their, you know, tapas. Yes. So you have here the toasted bread with fresh tomato and olive oil. oil. Okay. So you can uh, uh, take a, a one slice and put it on top of it. I see. Okay. So, so can you can uh -huh. eat it as that, that way? Okay, that way. Okay. And then, uh, let's see. Just be careful. Mm -hmm. So 
now let me try um so what was mm. the combination of the the toast with the tomato and the olive oil yeah it's um close to perfection mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just like really uh, complements the taste of the the saltiness of this ham and then the, there's a sweet tinge in the um, taste of the olive oil mm -hmm. on the bread mm -hmm. um, oh thank you and this goes with um, sparkling yes. well, rosé sparkling rosé mm -hmm. so uh, you can pair it with the sparkling rosé too so yes, with yeah. cava with a uh, oh, wonderful uh, red wine mm -hmm. uh, sherry uh -huh. uh, champagne so they told me that's one of your favorite rosé. Oh, yeah, so that's thank why you. I'm the <laughs> mm. Wow, perfect. So, um, yeah, and uh, please tell us about this restaurant. Um, you know, um, the owner, we'd love to meet her also. No? And we heard that she uh, um, started several uh, restaurants in uh, Greenbelt and then she's moved on to put up her own um, Chef Jesse, mm -hmm. uh, a tree of restaurants, right? Yes. And he only um, he only uh, served this very cool time in her restaurant here in Rockwell, or, or also in other of her restaurants as well. Well, from now, so we are offering this only here at Rockwell. Okay, from now, and uh, it's uh, exclusive here at Rockwell, and uh, maybe in the future, and uh, the, when uh, she wants to open some more restaurants, and we will try to put it in the. Uh, some other restaurants of Chef Jesse. Yeah. Um, so you were saying that the selling point of this uh, Iberic plant is the perfection part. That it's really, you know, from the beginning to the end, the whole process mm -hmm. is perfection. It's perfection. Yeah. So perfection and patience. <laughs> <laughs> because that's a long time of waiting. That's more than three years to have this finished product. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, so any any more, uh, you know, parting words that you would like to invite your guests about uh, this? Yes, well, uh, specialty you have? Mm -hmm. so well, we are serving it here at Chef Jesse and uh, we are uh, selling it to, uh, we are selling the, uh, the, the, the leg of ham. So if the clients, they want to order it for their parties, mm -hmm. events or uh, some convention meetings and uh, weddings. So normally in Spain, most of all the weddings, so this is like their, their lechon. So if there's no ham on their weddings, like this, the, the, that, that wedding is not exist. Okay, so uh, this is uh, very important. So this is a luxury product. So mostly uh, uh, most of the high end events, uh, they're always present. And uh, I'm carving ham, so I was uh, uh, with the five day ham, carving ham since uh, like like four years in Barcelona, and uh, 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 Barcelona football stadium, okay, in all the games. So they were a sponsor and carving in a presidential uh, hall when in that time. So that was four years. And now uh, we are uh, me and my brother, so we are carving ham and uh, the UEFA Champions League of the Real Madrid Soccer Stadium. So now I'm here, so my brother is in charge of Harvingham at the UEFA Champions League. Wow, bravo. Okay, so where else uh, do we catch you, uh, Michael? After after here, where are the other events that you would be attending? And uh, please give them your contact number so that they can, uh, if anyone would like to get in touch with you. Okay. <laughs> Well, uh, from now, so I'm here at Chef Jesse, so up to uh, seventh, uh, seventh of uh, of this of May, and then from that, so I'm going back to Spain this tenth, tenth of, uh, of May, and then so I have a special event in uh, in Caracas, Venezuela, so that's uh, June two, so uh, that's uh, my regular client, so uh, I'm there almost a year, okay, and then on the twenty fifth, so I'll be in uh, uh, Brussels in Belgium. Okay, and then so uh, I have more. Uh, so we are doing like a service too to our uh, special uh, clients in Madrid. So mostly we are uh, carving ham for uh, the five, five star hotels and high end restaurants in the in the in the city. Okay. 
Okay, there you have it. Uh, we'd like to wrap up and thank all of you for um, staying with us. And we hope you enjoyed another feature of the June Hour Talk Show. And good food, uh, good wine, and good company. So uh, please stay tuned in for another episode next week. And we'd like to thank um, Chef Jesse at the Rockwell. And of course, our expert, Maestro Contador de Jamon, um, Maestro Michael Tevez. Lopez. Thank you so much and uh, see you all next week. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. <laughs>